um, speaking to schools that there's a, a feeling in the system that no one has all of the answers, but everyone's really keen to learn what everyone else is up to. Um, so my huge thanks to uh, Louise from Gwine Varen for agreeing to share what they've been doing for their foundation phase. Um, I think foundation phase particularly has presented perhaps more challenges in a way to think of because the you know the age of the year, uh, learner comes into play and, and makes some marked differences perhaps to how we're able to work with owner, uh, older learners. Um, we are recording the session so um, we'll be able to share it more widely afterwards with people who um, who aren't able to join us today. Um, but it really is designed to be for schools by schools. As I say, Louise kindly agreed to, to share with us um, what's worked um, for them and you know barriers they found and how they overcome them and then we've got an opportunity to um, either share any reflections or ask any questions you might have um, about their approach so um, you'll be delighted that I'm going to mute myself very shortly and, and hand over to Louise and um, I'm sure we'll all get a lot from listening thanks. I hope so <laughs> try and share my screen now hopefully this won't be one of my barriers let's have a look here we go um, are you, oh gosh, gone on too far now. Are you all able to see my screen? We can, yeah. Fabulous. Good start. <laughs> so my name is Louise Evans and I currently teach a mixed U and two class at Gwen Barron Primary School and that's in Merthyr Tidville. And I've been the digital lead at Gwynvara and the foundation phase leader as well. And I became digital lead back in 2014. And it wasn't really because I was an expert in IT or anything. It was just I had more patience than most. And I wasn't afraid to have a go. I'm the sort of person that if I don't know how to do something, I'll Google it, I'll troll forums, I'll try and find out because I like to be able to do the different aspects. And also, I'm the sort of person who can lose an hour or two very easily trying to align boxes and tables in Google Docs and different things. So I'm a little bit sad, really, like that. <laughs> so today, I'm just going to talk to you about our remote learning experiences. And it, I'm not going to tell you how you should be doing things. You might be doing something that's really similar to what we are doing. You might be doing something really completely different. But what is important that you do what works best for you as a school, because every school is different, all classes are different. We are constantly changing what we're doing. Um, we're re a really open staff and we're all learning from each other. And since back in last April, we've adapted things so many times, whether it be a quick message on WhatsApp from somebody or whether it be a more formal meeting. You know, we've had lots of discussions about things. So as I say, we're far from experts. We're just going to share what we've um, been through with everybody. So um, if you have, don't know Gwen Barron at all, um, we are uh, it's based in Merthyrville. We've got 268 children on roll at the moment. And it, our catchment area is quite varied. The majority of our children come from the Pendarren area within Merthyrville. And it, um, at the moment, we've got 10 classes within the school. I wouldn't say we're quite a one and a half form entry, but we have got 43 children in reception, for instance, and some of the other classes are a bit smaller, some of them are a bit larger. We're part of the Penadre cluster, but we also feed Father High School and we also feed Bishop Edley School as well, so we've got a bit of a mixed bag. So going back to March 2020, in the foundation phase, we thought that it was going to be short term closure. So to begin with, we just gave out paper packs. We gave extra reading books. We gave high frequency word resources. We gave sound cards. We gave number resources, some sheet based work. But all the ideas were more of a list of things that they could do and projects and things they could get involved with. We also gave the parents um, the children special maths books, and their special writing books. And that's all these are, are lined exercise books, which we cover at the start of the year with wrapping paper. So when the children are completing their sorry, enhanced activities, they try and do their best work because it's like a best book that they do independently. So we've just given them something to use while they were at home. And we also sent out the Bug Club and the Mathletics passwords then. Even though we'd sent them out previously, we sent them out again just to make sure they had them. Key stage two, we were already using Google Classroom with, but this wasn't through Hub. 
So they were ready to go with Google Classroom. We sent the passwords out again and we sent out the Bug Club and the Mathletics passwords as well. So at the start of the Easter holidays was my bit of a moment where I was watching the news and we realised it was going to go on for so much longer. So I spoke to um, the head teacher, Louise Bibby, and it, she was feeling exactly the same. And we realised we really needed to get things up and running for foundation phase because um, we couldn't go on the way that we were doing things. So I'm really lucky that Louise is a very supportive head teacher. She's very much, um, she values everybody's opinions and she encourages distributed leadership. So she gave me the go ahead to do whatever I thought would be best for us. So we had two options really. We could have gone down the seesaw route or we could have gone down the Google Classroom route. We'd all use seesaw within the classes and the children were used to uploading some of the uh, enhanced activities on there, but we were using it more for portfolios and we hadn't opened it up for the parents. So um, we, we all use G Suite and Gmail and all the staff were familiar with sharing things on Drive and using some of the G Suite apps. So after weighing everything up, it made more sense to me to go with Google Classroom. And because I had more experience with this as well, I could share the basics with everybody. And it wasn't a case of me having to research things beforehand because there wasn't enough time to do this. You know, we wanted to get it up and running straight away for after the Easter holidays. So also I felt that it would prepare the children as well in the foundation phase. So when they went into key stage two, they were already up and running with Google Classroom and we could keep everything consistent across the school. So from nursery to year six, we were all using the same. So at this point, it was still the school holidays. So I didn't want to worry staff too much about where we were going next. I wanted to get everything ready and give them the support that they needed so they could get things up and running quickly rather than cause mass panic, really. So um, what I did, I thought, right, how are we going to go about this? As I say, Key Stage 2 were using Google Classroom independent from Hub. But I thought the quickest way that I could get everybody in the foundation phase up and running was to do it through Hub because I could use the management portal. I didn't have to fiddle with individual accounts. I didn't have to set up. Um, CSV files or anything I could just do a few clicks and everybody's classroom was ready so and also as a local authority we've had lots of discussions about changing over to Hub Google so I thought this would help with that process because the children would filter through the school then being familiar with Hub Google and using Hub Google so we could keep it coming through so I thought really it's a no-brainer for us to go down that route so during the first two weeks before the holidays we've been encouraged to um, complete some online training and I had already completed some training on Screencastify so my next challenge was how I could quickly upskill staff so that they could use Google Classroom really quickly so I thought if I use Screencastify I could record my screen then and it obviously make the videos that the staff could use so for anyone that's unfamiliar with Screencastify it's really simple to use it's just a screen uh, sorry a Chrome extension which allows you to record your screen, basically. So you can just showcase how to do things really easily, talk over it, and then people can follow your uh, tutorials. So I decided that I was going to use it to create how-to guides for the staff, and mainly because it was fresh in my mind, easy to use, the videos can be really easily edited, and also they automatically save to drive, so I could share things really easily, and they could be shared via email really easily as well. So. I began to create my how-to guides. The first one needed to be really simple um, to begin with, just logging into Google Classroom because we had the added confusion because all the staff had their own school Google accounts. But I needed to get them to realise they needed to be signed out of their school Google or otherwise when they clicked on the icon on the Hub um, main page, it would take them to their school Google, not their Hub Google. So it would have caused all sorts of confusion. So the first one focused on that. And then the next ones then focused on Google Classroom themselves. I did an overview of Google Classroom. I didn't want to dictate to everybody how they should do things, but I wanted to showcase what they could do. And then they could build on that then as they went along. Um, the next video then was just a basic video of the Google Classroom stream. And that was just showing how they could create announcements, how they could schedule posts in advance so that could help with daily workload and things if they wanted to be more organised. 
Um, and then it was just creating assignments and things then which the families could access. So I focused on creating daily topics to attach the assignments to, creating the assignments, adding links from YouTube, creating materials as resources, and also um, scheduling the announcement, I'm sorry, assignments as well, so that they could be organised again and they didn't have to schedule them straight away first thing in the morning to be ready for them to use. So I have attached one of my videos. I'm not going to play it all, but I just wanted to show how... Right, so to create your assignment, you need to come off the stream page and go into the classwork tab at the top. So if I click on there, this then is where all the assignments will appear for the children. You need to, first of all, click on create. And the first thing that I would personally do, and I'm going to do for my class, is click on topic. This allows me to add the date in. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because it's easier for them to see which assignment you want the children to complete on which day. So I'm going to... I'll start with it. As you can see, it's really simple, nothing jazzy. It's just a case of me sharing how to do something. They could pause the videos as they wanted to. They could go back to videos if they needed to. And it was just giving them an idea of how to do things without me having to be there with them. So after I'd created all of the videos and things which I thought would be useful for them. That's when I needed to get everybody on board. So initially, I shared um, everything with staff through Drive and through the emails, but I also communicated through WhatsApp. And I'm really lucky at our school because staff are always so accommodating, they're supportive and they're always willing to have a go. Nobody, obviously there were a few people panicking, thinking, oh gosh, will I be able to do it? But they all agreed that Google Classroom was the best option for us. They were keen to get things up and running. And even though it was still the school holidays, by that first Monday, we were all ready. We were all up and running and good to go because everybody was, you know, willing to go ahead with it. And even though Key Stage 2 had um, been using Google Classroom already, they found some of the videos useful as well because they were tips and things that some of those had missed. For example, one of the teachers, she was posting all of the assignments the night before and she had some really keen children in the class who were completing some of the assignments at 10 o'clock in the night uh, previously for the following day and then the next morning she'd have messages miss what can we do now so that helped to then to resolve that problem as well so um everybody found them really useful they were all up and running with things and it, as i say um we were also using Google Meet as well so that staff could share their screens, I could share my screen and we could have dialogue. But it was really nice because people were asking questions like, can we do this? Can we do that? Rather than how do you do? Because, you, you know, you could see that they'd watched the videos and they found them useful. So the next step after all staff were involved was to get the parents on board. So I decided to use Screencastify again to create a video guide for parents to allow them to be able to access. And again, I decided to use Google, um, sorry, Screencastify to do this. I also needed to make sure that parents didn't get any confusion with the Google logins as well, because Key Stage 2 siblings would have been using School Google and the Foundation Face would have been using Hub Google. I needed them to make sure that they'd signed out a sibling accounts or any Gmail accounts that they had and just make sure that they were ready and up and running. And also, I needed to make sure that they knew how to log in on different devices. So for this, I used Adobe Spark to create everything. And I used Screencastify to record my screen. I created lots of photographs and um, did screenshots on different devices so that they could see then how they could access on iPads, how they could access on an Android um, device and different things then to support them as well. And if anybody hasn't used Adobe Spark at all, it's really easy to use. I used it through my Google um, account, the school Google, which is where you can see the logo. But if you use it through Hub now, you don't get the logo on there either. And you can personalise them to your school if you wanted to. But Adobe Spark is really easy. I used it with Foundation Phase children as well, um, obviously when they're back in school. But um, it is nice and it's, as I say, I find it really simple. It's a bit like PowerPoint, but adding video clips and things together. Another thing I found really invaluable all throughout the lockdowns has been Bitly. And this isn't anything special, it's just a link shortener. And for anyone who wants to share documents and things with parents or put something online, if you want to share something that's got limited characters, 
typically is always my go-to because, for instance, if I wanted to tweet something, you're only allowed to use so many characters. And if you want to text out to parents, you're only allowed so many characters. So, for instance, with the parent video that I created, um, when I put it on to drive, you get a really long link. So with Bitly, then I was able to shorten that link. I could put a little message, add the link on the end, and the parents didn't need to go anywhere to find the video. They could just click on that link within the text and then they could watch the video, which would help them to be able to get to um, into Google Classroom. But we've also shared lots of things through Bitly. Um, we've created Bitly links for guidance. We've created Bitly links for the letters from the chief education officer, messages, anything. So at least then, as I say, it makes life easier for the parents. They haven't got to go to the website. They haven't got to go anywhere else. It's just literally on their phone. So, and we found that really useful. Another thing we did at the start of the lockdown back in April, I was afraid that we were going to have issues with people logging into Google Classroom. So we wanted to create a site where people didn't have to log in. As I said, um, parents are using Facebook, they're using social media, so we knew they didn't have a lot of trouble accessing things on the internet. So we just wanted to have a holding site where we could just upload any overviews, any PDFs of documents or um, tasks that the children were completing so that they could get to access the work while we were supporting them. We always directed family to Google Classroom and we wanted to use this site as a last resort, but we wanted something available in the meanwhile in case it took a couple of days to get them on or just in case um, it was easier for some families for different circumstances. So this was set up. Um, I embedded the folders from Drive into the pages. So it was just a case of staff dropping into a folder on Drive what they wanted to, and it was as easy as that, and it would automatically update on the website then. So um, that was another thing. But as time has gone on, we found we haven't really had a need for that during this lockdown because our parents are engaging with Google Classroom. And if they're not engaging, there's other reasons why they're not. It's not because they can't log in or they need support to access. So that one was mainly for the last lockdown. So throughout each of the lockdowns, communication has been key. We've had to keep um, the communication going with families. We decided to ring families on a weekly basis. We offered support and guidance and also just a friendly voice at the other end of the phone. Some parents just welcomed a chat with another adult and just, you know, discussing things that were going on daily with them and just bits of advice how they could get the children working. And we just supported them as necessary, not just IT issues then. So, um, as I say, I, it was lovely because I was a bit like a celebrity when I rang some houses. I had to speak to every member of the family in one household. I spoke to the grandparents as well every time I rang and I was passed around the family, which was quite funny. But, um, no, it's been nice. And as I say, during the setup, communication has had to be key. We continually asked if they needed support with anything. We continually um, talked them through processes. If staff couldn't um, advise how to get on, I rang uh, other families. I also visited some families in the beginning to try and help them to get on with their devices as well if they couldn't access. And also, our head teacher. If we couldn't um, get in touch with any families or they weren't engaging online, we passed on names to the head teacher and then she completed home visits and check ins with them then just to make sure whether everything was okay and obviously to safeguard the children. So once everybody was online, um, we did, well, saying that from the 20th of March, we started loading out devices for Key Stage 2. But now that everybody was on board with online learning, we wanted to make sure that there weren't any children being missed and everybody had the right um, equipment they needed and access to Wi-Fi and different things. So I created a Google form, which I sent out to all the families. We bitly the link and it went straight out to them. And this helped us to identify children then that we needed to support. And it also helped us to identify our Dell children. So we loaned out lots of um, devices and the local authority then um, gave some Wi-Fi devices and other devices through the Dell project. With regards to engagement, back in um, April 2020, we were more or less doing tick sheets and different things, and um, it was all through Google Sheets, but this lockdown, we've really gone into ragging things and looking at uh, daily engagement and weekly engagement. So I've just created a, a simple Google Sheet, and 
if I put a zero in, they come up as red. If you put a one in, they come up as amber. If you put a two in, they come up as green. So just making life simple. And um, we do that then. We rag them daily. We rag them weekly. And we also were ragging the team's session attendance as well. And this helped us just to have a bit of evidence if we needed to when we were looking at engagement. With regard to whole school engagement, I made another Google form, which I populated so that it automatically gave us the percentages because um, we were doing it verbally before for the head teacher. And you know what it's like sometimes, um, somebody from above asks a question, what's the engagement like in your school? So this was just making life so much easier. I could share the Google sheet with everybody. Everybody could fill in their data and then it was there. It could be accessed by everybody and it was just a quicker job. So staff, as I say, we're always open and honest anyway. We always share things that go well. We share things that didn't go so well. And we've continued learning from each other. Um, we shared resources. LSAs were involved with our Google Classrooms. And they were starting to interact with the children as well. And also, we magpied lots of ideas from social media. Lots of people were sharing tips and tricks. And we took some of these on board. But although we did have lots of well-being discussions about trying not to focus too much on these um, social media groups, because we all need to take time for ourselves and switch off as much as possible. And you know what it's like, the lockdown and um, the pandemic's been everywhere, isn't it? We've all had a lot to deal with. So um, we were very much learning as we went along, and both families and staff. And it was a case of us keeping that communication going and encouraging the families to tell us if something was too difficult to access or if something didn't work as well as we'd hoped. We encouraged them to tell us so that we could continually improve our practice. So to begin with, we decided we were going to do three tasks a day. We were going to look at literacy, maths and topic. And it, we encouraged families to complete their work, especially in the foundation phase, using paper or the special box and upload photographs and videos and different things. Lots of um, videos rather than writing all the time. But we still wanted the children to practice the skills they needed. We wanted them to practice the number formation. We wanted them to practice the letter formation. We weren't expecting them to do everything online. And we also wanted to give the parents access to things they could just look at on a mobile phone and they could still complete the activity with the children as well. So if there were any issues, they could, you know, they could still access. So as time went on, then we added in other things. With topic, we always try to keep things um, maybe well-being, physical, outdoor sort of activities. So we're just trying to provide the children with a range of experiences and just fun things and try and break the day up for them as well. So this is just an example of one of the nursery overviews. I wanted to show nursery in particular because everyone really associates um, Google Classroom with Key Stage 2. And I just wanted to show that we, the way we were using it was more of a holding site for our activities. It was nice because uh, we could have the communication between the families. Um, we could have whole class discussions, different things, but it was just more some way for them to access their activities. You can see there's lots of links and things on there to internet sites. But as I said, it was still things that they could do and they could access using a mobile phone if needed. So to begin with, as I say, it wasn't anything fancy, just simple activities and things to keep them going. So as you can see, this is just an example of one of the assignments on Google Classroom. You can see there's more detail than what would have been on the overview, which is why we were trying to encourage parents to come to Google Classroom rather than our home learning site. Because as well as having the extra guidance, you can see there's nine class comments on um, this assignment. There's been discussion about it. And we didn't want the parents and the families and the children to miss out on that discussion. And we didn't want them to miss out on the dialogue between the teacher. We didn't want them to miss out on things because we were trying to encourage the children to share things on the Google Classroom stream as well. So even though they couldn't really interact with each other, they sort of were and they were still seeing each other. So um, that was our beginning journey. Excuse this really loud slide, but I put lots of photographs in there just to show that we were trying as well to incorporate things that were going on around them. We wanted to have like real life experiences and things in there with them. So back in last April, our theme was we can be heroes. And as well as the stereotypical comic superheroes, we tried to include lots of things that were going on in the world so, for instance, in the top left, we looked at Captain Tom, 
and for a week um, myself and you went to and Mrs Davis and you too we focused on creating birthday cards for him creating medals we designed a new garden for him because he was getting bored of walking the same route um they planned their own routes using directional language um we did physical activities where they had to complete things a hundred times throughout the week and just trying to make it fun and interactive for them we also focused on the Banksy image when that came out to do with the superhero NHS and the children designed new PPE for the NHS. They created hand washing posters. They wrote thank you letters for the NHS as well, just trying to incorporate that, but not too much. Um, V-Day, we tried to create activities linked to V-Day so the children could complete baking activities. They created paper aeroplanes, um, designed mugs, wartime recipes. Some of them tried to learn the Lambeth Walk, which was quite nice because you had lots of videos of those as well, which were lovely. And, you know, just trying to incorporate things that they say. With this time around, um, our theme is Wonderful Wheels. So we focused on St. Doinwen for two weeks and we tried to get lots of um, St. Doinwen activities in. So the children listened to the story, they sequenced the story, they designed and created cards, they created heart jigsaws to help to mend her broken heart. Um, we looked at healthy foods to keep the heart healthy. They did um, exercise and measured heart rates. They designed and created family love spoons about things that were important to them as families. Um, they created ice experiments to see how quickly ice could thaw in different surroundings and um, how they could help Mylon to escape because he turned into a block of ice. So we were just trying to incorporate, as I say, different things. And like at the moment, we're looking at St. David. We would have been doing that whether we were in school or whether we were at home and different things as well. So I put this quote in, it's from the actor Alan Alda, but I thought it fitted to what we were doing and fits to education all the time because we continually evaluate and revising things to benefit the children and the families and we always will continue to change things. And also there were so many different things being thrown at us with the pandemic and guidance changes and changes that we needed to make as well to improve our practice. So I'm going to talk now about the changes that we've made as we went along and some of the things that we found that weren't working quite so well and then we've made the changes to try and benefit everybody. So at the start, when we were setting the assignments for the children, even though we'd asked the parents to click on markers done or hand in, we found that some of them were forgetting to. So we needed to really drum in, please will you um, click markers done or hand in, because otherwise we can't see what's being completed. And sometimes we thought that some of the children weren't engaging, but they actually were. It was just the fact that they hadn't uploaded anything or clicked on it. Also, sorry, I moved on to a then. Um, we found that our class stream was getting a little bit cluttered because all of the assignments as they were being posted, they were going on to our class stream, as well as any announcements from me or from other teachers, as well as some of the different posts the children were putting on. So we found that if you went into the settings, you could change the settings on the general page. So you could hide the notifications on the stream. And we found that really useful because then it was just any messages from me or, or from another member of staff and messages from the children. As you can see there, it's far easier to see the messages and they won't be missed. And also, if I posted something, if you click on the three dots by the side of an announcement, you can move it, move it further up the stream. So if I said something and then the children had come back with lots of things afterwards, I could move my post back to the top so anybody who logged in afterwards could find my post straight away. So we found that to be quite useful. Also, in the beginning, we decided that we weren't going to um, mark, we were, going, we were going to mark the work, but we weren't going to give the children a grade because you can give them points and different things. And you can also give due dates for assignments, but we decided we wanted to keep it simple for the parents. So we thought we're not going to go down that route, but then we quickly discovered that that was going to cause us lots of problems. So it made it difficult for us to see when work had been responded to. So, so, for instance, there, it looks like 17 pieces of work were handed in. But actually, I'd responded to some of those pieces of work, but it doesn't say that there. So I looked for different ways then that we could change it to make it easier. Because initially, I was going to the people section on Google Classroom, looking at an individual child, and then trying to find the individual task to see if I'd responded to it. And as you can see, that was so time consuming and it couldn't be done. 
of, um, most of the time I was trying to keep a track of what I was doing. But like some days I was in charge of looking after the hub. And then other days I was doing other things while I was also doing my Google Classroom. So sometimes I'd miss things and I think, oh, did I check that one? So I found I was double and triple checking things. So to make life easier, we decided we were going to give um, work a mark. So we decided if we give it one point if we've marked it, and then if we return the tasks, it'll make life easier for us because we can see. So as you can see now, there's nothing handed in. There's three yet to be completed, but 25 are marked. So you can see clearly that I've marked and I've commented and I've responded. And the same with the people section. You can clearly see if they've got one out of one is being marked. If it's handed in, it'll just say handed in. And if it's assigned, it means they haven't completed it yet. So again, we could clearly see that we'd responded to it. So another thing that we found, or I found anyway, but I think it might just be my mind because I like to have things in certain ways. I was looking for work afterwards, and especially if I wanted to tweet some photographs or make a pic collage. So I was going back into my Google Drive, into my classroom folder, and I was finding it difficult to find some of the work. So I decided to use online emojis. I use getemoji.com, but there's lots of online emoji sites. And that's all I do is put an emoji for each of the different tasks. So as you can see, literacy, I've got books, um, ABC for phonics, one, two, three, four for maths. So I can see clearly that's which task it is. And the hearts at the end are just my colour groups for in the class. So um, green groups, my top group, yellows, my middle reds, my bottom group. So just so I can find things really quickly, because as you see in my Google Drive now, I can just quickly look for the books to find the literacy, look for the date, then I can quickly find the group and get the work or whatever I needed to find. So I, I find that more useful than other members of staff because some of them are like, oh, it's in my folder. I know where it is. It doesn't matter. And they, they won't look in for things as much. And also you can find work really quickly in the to review section because, again, you could just find the emojis really quickly and access the work that way if you find it easier there. So another thing we started doing um, we're adding materials that the parents could just use to support them in the house. So um, I was adding things like number squares, number lines, nothing fancy again, just things they could print off and access or things they could use on screen just to support them. Um, I created lots of handwriting videos and things they could follow the formation, um, high frequency word lists, just things that you'd generally have in drawers in your classroom that you might sometimes refer to. I thought it might be something that the parents might want to refer to. So as well as sometimes attaching them to the assignments, they knew they could go to this area all the time on the classroom stream, sorry, on the classroom page, and they'd be able to access the resources. Also, we were uh, started to find that because of different work schedules and different things with families, some of the children were completing tasks at different points during the week. Sometimes we had children completing daily. Sometimes your children completed on weekends. You know, some people's rotors were all over the shop, so they were just to win when they could. But some families I found were completing work, which we'd set perhaps two weeks previously, and we were trying to get them to complete the tasks that we wanted them to complete first. So at the end of each week, I found that if I created a completed assignments topic and put all the work for that week in the topic and then moved it lower down the classroom, um, the classwork page, they were doing the work that I wanted them to complete first. So I was putting the, um, the work I wanted them to complete, then all my resources that I'd added for them to use, and then the completed assignments. So they could find them if they wanted to, and they could catch up, but they'd complete the ones they saw first. So I found that worked much better for us. Also, another thing that we found as we were going along, you can um, re reuse assignments and you can reuse posts on the classroom stream, which I found really useful because sometimes, for example, if I'm completing a maths activity, I might have had the same sort of started activities daily. So, for instance, if they were counting in twos, fives and tens, I might have wanted to start each assignment with the same sort of practical activities. So I found if I reused Mondays and then made all my changes, added the different work to Tuesdays, I could then keep reusing and just keep changing as the week went along. And also for phonics activities, um, especially during this lockdown, I was creating pre-recorded uh, materials they could use. So I might have wanted to assign those daily, but for the week, so then I could reuse those posts as well, which was making life a bit easier for myself, especially because I was differentiating things four ways. 
so you know he was really helpful in that um circumstance then and and also he was quite nice because you can share things and reuse things from other classrooms so if there's any members of staff who were in um, a couple of year groups or they might teach certain sessions they could share things from other classrooms and also if you archive a google classroom you can still reuse a post so some things that i used in the last lockdown i was able to reuse and make my changes especially because last time round i was in a straight year one class this time round, i got year one too so some of the activities i could use with my lower groups this time and especially when it came to number because you know you complete similar activities in different ways all the time and sometimes you want to practice something and think oh i've already got that and i can reuse it so that was quite useful and again on the stream i every day i was writing just an overview of the activities for that day so i said in literacy this math this topic this so i was using one as a bit of a, a frame and changing it to, so that was helping me to take less time to create them and also scheduling happy birthday announcements I like to do that just for the children so I could easily schedule them and I also made sure that I was saying the same thing so it wasn't being nicer to one child than another just in case so at least that was another quick way that I could reuse posts then as well. So um, as time's gone on we've tried to do lots of different things we've tried to get the children to collaborate on things as well so Google Jamboard is something that we've used which is really simple to use and this one is just a simple activity where um, the children are creating their pirate names and it was just depending on the month that they were born and their first name, what their pirate name was going to be. So initially I created um, a video on how to create a sticky note and then they followed that then to be able to add their own sticky notes. But we've done them for lots of things. We've done them for just check-ins where the children just told us how they're getting on with things. We've used them for just sharing news if they want to share anything with each other. But the children quite like it and they like seeing each other's ideas and things as well and it was nice for them to be able to collaborate and again this is something I'd like to use when we're back in the classroom as well as just a different way of communicating ideas and things with group work and different things so I hope we didn't want to move on then sorry so as I say this time round we created lots more pre-recorded materials initially we were trying to use things from YouTube but as time has gone on, we found that it works better for the children. It just reminds them that we are there as well and we are a person. We're not somebody, something that just types something on the screen to them. So um, I use Screencastify a lot, but I do try and create videos where they get to see me as well so that they know, as I say, I am still there for them. So we decided initially we weren't going to try and get everybody to create loads and loads of videos every week. If everyone created at least one video a week, if they wanted to create more, they could. But we found everybody found them so easy to create. They were doing lots and lots. And I'd say most members of staff were creating videos for the children daily. Um, some were using more of just a video. Some were using Screencastify. Some were videoing themselves, um, like writing or modelling something. But in the beginning, I just wanted to get across. It didn't matter how they went about it didn't matter if it was jazzy, it didn't matter if it wasn't jazzy, like something could be really effective to show how to do something with just a piece of paper and a pen. You know, it doesn't have to have graphics popping or, you know, it doesn't have to be anything. So, as I say, people were creating them for all sorts of different things. I created phonics videos where it was my turn, your turn, so the children were having me modelling and they could just practice. Because sometimes, especially with phonics, when it gets the set three sounds, some of the parents might be teaching the children the sounds in the wrong way so we just made sure they knew what they should be saying and they knew how to do the different um digraphs and things i also created poems to support the children to learn a welsh poem for the Deadford. so i knew the parents would have had a nightmare with that one otherwise so i created about six different videos where it was just me modeling for the children to practice and we practiced yesterday when they were back in class and it was nice because lots of them had been practicing. They weren't quite there with it. It is going to take some time together, but, you know, they, they did know part of it. It wasn't starting from scratch. Um, maths videos, they say, create loads of maths videos for them. And sometimes I would create it them later on in the week. For instance, I was finding some of the parents sometimes push the children a little bit too much to do things mentally. And some of the children were coming on lovely before Christmas. And I didn't want them to lose their confidence. So, for instance, when we were adding two-digit uh, two digit numbers, sorry, I can't say it, 
and um, multiples of 10. Some of the parents were really pushing them to do it mentally and some of the children were ready for it. So I just created a simple video. I'm not going to show you the video, but I'm just showing it. I think you're going to use a little bit of a video at 20 equals. When we move on 10, we move down one. So when we count 20, we're going to go 10, 20. So if we double check again, we've got 52, add 10, 20. So I've moved on to, we've gone 52, 62, 72. So 52 add 20 is 72. That video really was created more for the parents because I wanted, really wanted to get across. They didn't need to do it mentally. The group that I was referring to, they were year one. They're quite bright to you and you know, they're doing well if they're using a hundred square to be able to do it. Some of the children within that group are able to do it mentally. But some of the children need that support and I wanted them just to have that practice with their parents. And then I could focus on the mental side of things when we were back together. So that worked really well. So it went from some of the parents telling me that the children were struggling to the fact that they found it quite easy, which is what I wanted for them to get that confidence and build it so that the mental math you know, would come then afterwards. So going back to what we're doing now as well, or what we were doing previously, sorry, I should say, here's an example of a nursery weekly over overview this time around. And this is the same for most classes. As you can see, the last time around, there were lots of YouTube links and YouTube videos and internet videos. As you can see on this overview, there's lots of Mrs Cross story, um, Mrs. Reed doing something. So you can see they've been created by the members of staff in the nursery. And as you can see as well, they've also tried to include everything that they would be doing in the class with the children at home. You can see phonics on there, you can see help with hair do, finger gym. I know Mrs. Cross does doe disco with them at home. You know, she's really trying to show and showcase all the things that they would be doing. So when the children come back into the classroom, they're familiar with them and, and they might actually realise, oh, we did this with Mrs. Cross when we were in school. So, you know, it's nothing new then and it's things that they would be practising. And also an important part of nursery is developing the relationships and developing those relationships with staff as well. And as you can see, um, the nursery teachers try to incorporate all the staff in the videos. There's um, Mrs. Cross is the class teacher. There's Mrs. Madge and Mrs. Reed then, who is, are the permanent LSAs. And Mrs. Pops is only in the nursery for once a week. And you can see she's created videos as well for the children. And they've tried to use their faces in all of their videos so that the children get to see them. And the children have really responded well to this. And the parents have said that, um, you know, they liked up when they see their teachers on the screen and it's been really nice. I'll just show you a little bit of one of um, Faisal because I thought it was lovely. Hi, boys and girls. I've got something exciting to show you today. I woke up this morning, opened my blinds and my curtains and looked outside and on my drive, there was something on my phone. I took a picture of it to show you. Can you see? Look at that. What is it? There's a giant footprint on my drive. Look, there's my car. And right by the side of it, a huge footprint. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop it. I will make you watch it all. But as you can see, she was doing a maths activity and it was measuring, comparing sizes and non-standard units and different things. But it was just nice for the children to be able to see her and make it real for them as well and to be able to see that you know she is still there so the next thing that we focused on back in um june 2020 yeah it was june uh, we started introducing teams for the children as a, um, a school we'd been using google meet but of course then um, our la wanted us to use teams so this was new for staff and it was also new for the children and the families as well. So I created another parent guide to access teams and it, we sent this out. It did cause a little bit of confusion in the beginning because of our school Google and our hub Google and different things and hub logins, I should say, rather than. But um, they did get there. But this time around, which is why I'm showing that, we found that you could just copy and paste a link from um, a meeting to a Google Classroom stream. 
And that helped us so much this time because parents have just been able to click on a link or the children have just been able to click on a link and they can access the meeting straight away. And some of them haven't even been able to, they haven't needed to log in either. So it's cut out all of that side of things. So this time around, the engagement with teams has been much better. So I think it put some off last time. And every class this time around has tried to do two sessions of teams every week so we can keep that um, relationships and things going and we can get the children interacting with each other. So these are some of the examples of teams activities that we've completed. We did try to make sure it was a well-being focus rather than an educational focus that we did teach different skills as we were going along as well but we did decide that from the beginning we weren't actually going to be teaching sessions on there. They weren't going to be some of our key stage two members that were teaching live, but we wanted them to be fun activities that children enjoyed, activities where they could interact with each other, where they could talk to each other. We did small group sessions where they could just have conversations, although some of those with me were like pulling teeth. I did have to intervene lots because even though we were trying to encourage that flowing conversation obviously it wasn't a normal circumstance so the children were a bit like oh what are we going to talk about other than losing teeth and the tough theory which seemed to come up in every one of my team sessions that seemed to be the news <laughs> bless them but um no but they, we had some lovely team sessions they shared news they um, show and tell one thing that did work well was the would you rather session which you could see at the bottom i just put in some examples of slides there just you could see that depending on what the children chose, um, they had to do a movement then depending on what they chose. And the last slide was a discussion when whether they'd like to have a million pounds or whether they'd like to have a magic wand. And that was quite nice because there was lots of discussion and different views. And then there were some savvy ones then who decided, well, if I had the magic wand, I could have a million pound and the wand. <laughs> so I could wish for that. And then those sorts of discussions came up. But it was quite nice. So Going back to being in school now, I'm nearly there, sorry, I'm talking at you. Um, now that we're back in school, our Google Classroom is not going anywhere. It's still going to stay. And we, our Google Classrooms have been up and running since September this year. We've used them for messages for families. We've used them for homework. We've put um, class overviews on there. But they, initially, they were more for self-isolating families. So they knew what we were completing in school and they could focus on things at home. But some of the parents have found those invaluable as well because they can see what the children are doing in school. And one parent in particular said that she's had lots of discussions about school with her child now because she could talk about activities. And when she used to ask, it was a case of what you do in school today. Um, I don't know. Didn't do anything. Played with my friends. So at least then she could get more out of her child by just saying, oh, you were doing this in math today. And they've had some lovely discussions. And also it was giving them opportunity to be able to complete things at home and just practice skills that they've been learning in school as well. So as I'm saying, our Google Classroom is not going anywhere. And also I want the children to use it within the classroom as well. For instance, I'm planning on doing some of the enhanced activities using our Google Classroom. I might create another one. I haven't quite decided yet so that the children can independently access with an LSA first and then hopefully independently and they can do some of our classroom activities then on there and throughout the lockdown I had five children in our hub so I'm hoping because they've already been accessing using the school devices they might be able to support the other children to access so I'm hoping I can utilize those as well and also in previous year groups I put colored dots on Chromebooks so the children always use the same Chromebook when they access Google Classroom. So then that will help them with the login process because the username will save. So that's all they'll have to do is put their passwords in. So it should help with the process of logging in as well. So as I say, uh, blended learning is definitely not going anywhere for us. We're going to try and carry on doing things even though we're back in the classroom. Hopefully it will stay face to face and we'll have all face to face and add it rather than having to do it because we've had to self-isolate or anything but it's definitely becoming part of the culture so thank you very much for listening i just got a quote and a meme that i thought was quite appropriate and i'd leave you with <laughs> because i bet everyone's feeling like the second meme at the moment after our lockdown experiences <laughs> and that's me thank you everyone. <laughs> 
enjoyed every bit of that. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from myself there. Um, 